Using the Extract Machinable Features command can save you quite a bit of time. However, it does have some limitations. On some parts, it may not recognize all of the features, and there are also certain types of features it will not recognize under any circumstances. Remember, when we defined the stock for this part, we had an offset of 100 thousandths from the stock to the top of this part, and all around the entire profile. To machine the extra material, we'll begin by inserting a face feature into our part setup to create the top face of this part. To do this, I'll right-click on the part setup and select Insert 2.5 Axis Feature. This is the 2.5 Axis Feature Wizard. In the Type drop-down list, you can see the different types of features I can add. We'll cover all of these features later in the section called Additional Part Features. For this example, I'll select the Face Feature. Next, I'll select the entities for this face feature. Before I do this, I want to bring attention to the fact that although this area is not highlighted in Magenta, it is an active selection window. I'll collapse this dialog box and select the top face of this part. When I expand the dialog box, you can see that the face was added in the window. Rather than selecting the face, I could have also used one of the sketches in this list or I could pick on one of the outer edges here. Since Convert to Loop Edge Selection is active, Camworks would have completed a closed loop around the part profile for me. I'll click Next to continue. Here I can tell Camworks what the end condition of the feature will be. In other words, the end condition tells Camworks how far into the material we'll be cutting to reach this face. These end conditions are the same as SolidWorks uses for extruded bosses and cuts. There's also another end condition I'd like to show you. It's called Up to Stock. Immediately you can see a preview of the end condition, and Camworks knows this is a 100 thousandths depth. In case the cut is going the wrong direction, you can flip it by checking the Reverse Direction box. For now, I'll leave the strategy set to Course. I'll click Next, Finish, then close the window. You can see that the Face feature has been added to the Feature tree under our Part Setup. I'd also like to show you how to insert a Part Perimeter feature. This is done at the Part Setup level. If I right-click the Part Setup, notice that there's an option in the drop-down called Insert Part Perimeter Feature. I'll select it. The Property Manager for this feature is pretty simple. I have two options for the type, either a Boss or an Open Pocket, as well as options for the strategy. The boss type creates the perimeter feature based on the actual perimeter of the part, in this case, the outside edge of the part. An open pocket feature creates the perimeter of the open pocket based on the stock, and the perimeter of the part will be an island within the open pocket. An open pocket type would be appropriate if the part were in a regular shape, for instance, an L shape. Since this part is rectangular, I'll choose the boss option, leave the core strategy, and click the green check to create the part perimeter feature. And you can see it added to the tree.